Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. We have x times y double prime minus y prime equals 3x squared. And we're going to be solving for y values. y is a function of x and we have this differential equation. So how do you solve these kinds of differential equations? First of all, this is not a linear differential equation, right? Is it linear? It is linear but it's second degree because of the second derivative. And the reason why it's linear is because y or any of its derivatives is not raised to any powers. They're all first powers or they're not multiplied together. Make sense? Okay, let's see how we can solve these kinds of equations. This should hopefully give you a general strategy. And I don't think we've done a problem like this before. Anyways, to be able to solve this problem first, we're going to look at an easier problem because this problem is not, or this equation is not homogeneous. As you can see on the right hand side, we have a function of x. And if we had zero instead, this would be a homogeneous equation. But solving the homogeneous case is definitely gonna help you find the general solution. So let's go ahead and consider the homogeneous version of this equation, which is when we set the right hand side equal to zero. Make sense? Okay. There's a couple ways you can go about solving this equation, and I'll be uh, introducing both. One way to approach it is try to isolate first y double prime. So let's go ahead and add y prime to both sides. And then I wanna go ahead and divide both sides by y prime. So that's gonna give me x y double prime divided by y prime is equal to one. And the reason behind that is I actually wanna bring the y double prime and y prime together. You'll see in a little bit why that's helpful, okay? Divide both sides by x now, you're gonna get y double prime divided by y prime equals one over x. Awesome. In this case, x should not be zero, right? But what happens in the original equation if x is equal to zero, then you get y prime equals zero and y just becomes a constant. You can go ahead and check that case at the end and see if that's going to be okay. Now, this form is important because notice that we have a fraction and in the numerator, we have the derivative of the denominator. In other words, if I set y prime equal to u, then y double prime by differentiation is gonna be u prime. So we basically have u prime divided by u equals one over x. And this equation is actually very easy to solve because think about the differentiation rules, right? Rules for differentiation. The derivative of what equals u prime divided by u? And I'm sure you said ln, right? The natural log, yes. So from here, we basically, by integrating both sides, we get ln u, ln u equals, and when you integrate one over x, you also get ln, and let's just ignore the absolute value for now, ln x or forever, right? plus a constant. Of course, I have to include a constant somewhere and I decided to put it on the right hand side, doesn't matter where. Now, of course, u is what? y prime, so we kind of have to back substitute. But before that, if you want, you can isolate u by e to the power of both sides. Let's go ahead and do e to the power of both sides. In other words, I'm talking about e to the ln u being equal to e to the ln x plus c, which can be written as e to the power power ln x times e to the power c. c is a constant, e to the c is a constant, so let's go ahead and call this k, another constant, right? And here we get the following, e to the power ln x is x by definition, because e to the x and ln x are inverse functions. So from here, what are we getting? We're getting u, which is e to the ln u, equals kx. It's that simple, right? But what is u? u is y prime. So we're gonna now back substitute, replace u with y prime. That's gonna give you y prime equals kx. And now by integrating one more time, you can get the y from here because the right hand side, there's no y. If there's a y on the right hand side, you can't do it because you don't know what y is. You can't integrate y with respect to x without knowing what y is. But in that case, you might have a separable differential equation, which is another story. Anyways, this is integrable, so we can just do it. And that's gonna be k times x squared divided by two. But again, k over two is another constant, so we can call that 
C sub 1. <laughs> the reason why I called C sub 1 is because I already use C, but you could also use C. It doesn't matter. Those are just dummy variables. Now, we got Y value, but wait a minute. Is that the only solution for this equation? Well, I guess at least for the homogeneous case, right? Looks like the homogeneous case is going to consist of this one. Okay, so, so we basically got the U value, which is k times x, right? And then from there you from the u we went to the y value. Oh, wait a minute. We forgot to do something. Forgot to add the constant, which is very important, right? Oh, you lose a lot of points. Okay. Too bad. Let's back up a little bit and we're going to be adding a constant because we're integrating kx. It's going to be kx squared over 2, which I called c sub 1x squared plus another constant, and I guess at this point we can go ahead and call this c sub 2, because I'm about to call this c sub 1. So y equals c sub 1 x squared plus c sub 2 is going to be the solution. But this is the y sub h. What does that mean? This is the solution to the homogeneous version. We don't have a homogeneous equation, but solving the homogeneous equation is actually a great step. Okay? A small step for me, a giant step for the mankind, <laughs> whatever. Okay, so this is my homogeneous solution, and I'm going to look uh, find the general solution. And the general solution, like y sub g, you can use the lowercase g, egg, I guess, a homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. So I got to work on the particular solution. Particular solution is like any solution that will work, right? And how do you find that? Good question. At this point, I'm going to be a little helpful in... Uh, you can definitely comment if you have any other ideas. And you might be questioning, like, why, how on earth, or why on earth, or what on earth, whatever, you pick this up, right? But I'm gonna, I'm going to try to keep it a little simple for you. So for my y particular, I'm going to pick something like ax cubed. And the reasoning behind is as follows. I basically want to get, I got this homogeneous solution, right? And it works. You can plug it in. But on the right-hand side, I have 3x squared. So I'm thinking about... When I differentiate y twice, let's say I start with x squared. Differentiate it twice, you're going to end up with a constant and it's going to be an x. Their difference may not give me x squared. May or may not. But if I start with x cubed, when I differentiate it once, I'm going to give an x squared. And then here I'm going to get an x and multiply by another x, which will give me an x squared. So that's probably more likely, I would say. But again, you're more than welcome to assume that this is something like x cubed plus bx squared plus so on and so forth. Anyways, so... Here's, to keep a long story short, this is what I'm going to take as my particular solution. So what I need to do now is test it out in the general equation. What is my general equation? This one. And of course, I do need to k, I do, I do need to check the non-homogeneous case. That, do I need the general solution? No, because we already know that y homogeneous satisfies this equation when right-hand side is zero. So it's definitely going to satisfy this too. There's a proof, but don't worry about it. Now, let's go ahead and uh, plug this in. Uh, differentiate y particular once. You're going to get 3ax squared. Differentiate that twice. One more time, 6ax. Let's go ahead and plug it in here and here. That's going to give me x times y double prime, which is 6ax, minus 3ax squared equals 3x squared. And from here, as you can see, my assumption was actually uh, good that I got something cubic. Because here, we get 3ax squared equals 3x squared for all x values. So a is going to be 1 from here, which means y particular is supposed to be x cubed. Awesome. It works. Don't worry. We verified it. It's all good now. So the general solution is then going to be what? Let's go ahead and take a look at the homogeneous case. c sub 1 x squared plus c sub 2, another constant, plus x cubed. Notice that part of this is not... Uh, with a constant because it's a particular solution. But guess what? This is going to be the solution for the non-homogeneous case. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.